the merciless wild, the heartless seas, when nature unleashes her cruelty, Bill, could you escape? Could you survive? These are the true stories of outdoorsmen confronted by death, armed with raw courage and a will to live. They are the ones who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. A father and daughter, and a lifelong shared love of the hunt. But the determination to take an elk drives one to dive dangerously deep into the Oregon wilderness. It was excruciating pain. The enemy is savage, lethal cold. My body was shutting down. And father and daughter will discover the depth of their love during a desperate search. If I don't get found, I'm going to freeze to death. It's only natural that Michelle Heilman would grow up hunting and fishing with her father, Benny, in the rugged and spectacular Wallowa Mountains in a remote part of Northeastern Oregon. Wallowa is a beautiful country. A lot of people call it little Switzerland. I've seen Switzerland. It is a lot like it. Beautiful mountains, clear streams, beautiful rivers, and Every way you turn, you can see mountains. For a hunter and angler, there may be no better place on Earth. I've been a hunter and a fisherman for as long as I can remember. Uh, Michelle and I have hunted together since she was old enough to go. She killed her first deer when she was about 14. Dad also taught her to be a skilled marksman and to have an appreciation for hunting firearms. I think my proudest moment was the four-point buck. He was big and I had made a contribution to the freezer. Now, a mild October day during elk season is about to usher in an ordeal for the Heilmans. When I woke up on October 27th, I didn't have any intentions of going elk hunting. I was going up to my folks' place. I was going to take care of their critters while they went out elk hunting. And um, my mother, when I had got there, she says, I just don't feel good. You go out with your dad. You spend time with your dad. And I said, I'm pooped. <laughs> I don't want to go out. I want to get that elk out. In spite of her fatigue, Michelle decides it will be worth it to spend time with her dad on the hunt and to have the chance of taking her elk this season. It was nice. The sun was shining. I mean, it was great. No complaints. Benny's plan for the day is to go where they've seen fresh tracks. He'll set Michelle out and set up ahead of her as she walks the woods toward him. They'll see what she pushes out. We had been in the same general area the day before, so uh, I had told her that I did not want to walk that morning. I was, my knees were hurting me really bad. And I says, I'll let you out, and I want you to walk. I didn't want her to cross the road, and I didn't want her to cross the fence. All right. Good luck. Thank you. See ya. It looks like a successful tactic when Michelle comes onto a trio of elk. When I started the walk, it wasn't 10 minutes, and I jumped the three, the bull, the cow, and the calf, and they went straight up, straight down, and I followed. I got one shot off, and that was it. Needing to know if she's wounded the bull, Michelle stays on the trail, ignoring her father's warning about the road and pushing down into a black canyon. My dad had said, don't cross the road. And I had thought, you know, he's done it 101 times. I'm going to do it. I may have my elk this year. I'm going to follow. 
I didn't think about telling anybody where I was going. Michelle's determination draws her deeper into treacherous territory. Once I crossed the road, followed the elk down into a little ravine, and the elk went down, crossing into a, another draw, and then into a canyon, I followed. And they just kept going straight down. And when I finally lost sight of them is when I took stock of my settings, looked around. It was probably about 4 o'clock, and I was at the bottom and thought, oh boy, I've got to walk all the way back up. Michelle Heilman is lost deep in the canyon, and her afternoon hunting trip is about to turn into a life-threatening ordeal. Hunter Michelle Heilman is lost deep in a hazardous canyon. Now her father Benny's concern is verging on a nightmare. I gave her an hour, about an hour and a half, and then I went down the, uh, the fence line looking for her. I didn't find her or any sign of her. I took the pickup and drove the roads all around the area looking for her, but no sign of her, no tracks, no nothing. I got very concerned, and I called the sheriff's office, sheriff's office this is and uh, requested search and rescue. The rescue team arrives and begins an all-out search. I don't know. I can't find I showed them the tracks. Uh, they marked that area, and they then uh, spread out and did what they called a grid search. To no avail, no tracks, no anything. Michelle calls up the survival techniques her father taught and builds a shelter for the night. When I made my decision to stay right there that night, I was thinking that it was the safest spot and the safest thing to do right there. By the end of October, the weather can take violent turns without warning. But as Michelle prepares to face the dark, there is hope in the sound of a string of gunshots. I bedded down there, and I had heard uh, nine shots. And I thought, well, I'll fire three shots, and they'll know that I'm down here. And they'll know I'm all right. And I had fired three shots. And somebody had fired some more shots. And I thought, well, they're answering my shots. They know I'm OK. But the deep canyon walls muffle the sound of Michelle's rifle from the ears of her father and the rescue team. That first day, search and rescue looked way into the night. I probably didn't quit till almost midnight. And they stopped the search until daylight on Monday morning. At first confident in her survival skills, Michelle begins to grow unsure as she tallies the long list of fundamental mistakes she has made. I screwed up. I should have had my, my day pack and because I had a blanket in it. I had a parka, sandwiches, fire material, medication. I, I was ready if I would have had that. Michelle makes it through one night with only cold and discomfort. But ahead lies unforeseen disaster before the morning's done. Daylight, about 6.30, I could see. And I was up and going again. And I was making my way across the rocks, and, and I was walking on top of that doing really well for my first 10 minutes, but I took a step. My leg disappeared into a hole. Excruciating pain. Everything in my mind was white. It was just pain. Michelle's hope of finding her way out has now been dealt a potentially fatal blow. The thought that came to mind was, I'm hurt. I don't know if I can get out of this. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of this canyon without help. To Michelle's injury, add the appearance of a bear hunting for food. But these are just the start of a string of mounting dangers. Elk hunter Michelle Heilman has plunged off the trail into the deadly maze of a dark canyon. After an icy night, she now lies seriously injured. And somewhere near her, a bear is roaming, looking for food. I didn't want to be a predator's meal. Michelle suffered a freak accident, and when she at last examines her leg, she realizes she has sustained a severe trauma. Tree branches have punctured the back of her knee. And there was two sticks underneath the kneecap, and I had managed to pull those out. There was no real major bleeding of any sort. There's no alternative. Keep moving or die. I pulled myself up the bank and crawled several feet. I was in a lot of pain. Didn't know what I was going to do exactly. I had no first aid kit with me. There was nothing there to bandage it. In excruciating pain, Michelle must crawl her way upward, making agonizingly slow progress. It's now been two days frigid temperatures, and no food. I had a real dear friend that said that rose hips were good for you. And there was several rose bushes, wild rose bushes along the sides. And so I decided that I would pick the rose hips and I would chew on those. And they weren't too bad, very seedy, but in a lot of ways, tastes like oranges. Then something else that I ate was uh, moss. Light moss makes you sick. Dark moss is palatable. <laughs> Measuring her progress in yards rather than miles, Michelle is still being shadowed by a bear. The bear was going up the hill the same time I was. He was foraging and looking for things to eat before he hibernated. Black bears attack and kill more people than do grizzlies. Luckily for Michelle, this one does not seem to have detected her. That was one of my fears, you know, if he got the smell of me or could smell my leg, it was an open wound. I was worried that he could take advantage of that and that put the fear into me. Michelle's desperate odyssey has now spanned days. But unknown to her, the force of volunteer searchers is only growing, giving her father hope. The search effort continued and seemed to grow every day. People brought extra horses. On Wednesday, there were so many people looking and coming that they had to turn people away. Temperatures falling to 14 below take their relentless toll on Michelle's body. I had been crawling for several days, and my feet got to the point where I couldn't feel them. And so for every step I took forward, it seemed like I was falling one step backwards. Incredibly, Michelle has survived for almost a week. When a passing helicopter fails to spot her, the suffering she is feeling begins to spread from her body to her mind and her spirit. On about the seventh day, my body was shutting down. It just didn't feel right. My mind wasn't as crisp and clear as I thought it should be. And I was thinking, you know, this is, this is getting close to the end. If I don't get found, I'm going to freeze to death. Feeling she's nearing her end, Michelle prepares a final testament. I had my walking stick with me, and I decided that I was going to carve a message to my dad. And I think I wrote on, I'm sorry, Dad, but it wasn't your fault. And then she suffers yet another fall. 
Michelle is failing fast. All she has left is her faith and perhaps divine intervention. Michelle Heilman's October Elkhont in Oregon has turned into a saga of incredible hardship. Lost, freezing, starving, and badly injured, how has she survived this long? It may be that help came from an angelic origin. On my third night, I was in a lot of pain, and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get through it alone. And I had asked God for help. I said, it's cold, I need warmth. There's just no way that I can get through this alone. I went to sleep and I slept fairly sound and I was warm. And I woke up and there was this personage beside me. And I looked at him and I thought, wow, I'm warm. God's taken care of it. Michelle's father, Benny, feels time is slipping away for his daughter. Benny, we're gonna keep and he begins going. to think okay. the unthinkable. Guys out there, um... The possibility of her still being alive was slim. I knew it was coming, but it was heartbreaking because I felt that she was still alive. She's never been a person to give up on anything. The sheriff's office and the search and rescue people felt that it was time to, to go from search and rescue to recovery. Eight days and seven nights into the ordeal, the authorities are about to scale back the search to a skeleton crew. Then he takes to the radio and asks for volunteers to help him find his daughter. 350 neighbors and complete strangers respond. Somewhere in the dark canyon that the elk drew her down into, Michelle is losing her fight to live. Then, a Heilman family friend, Will Lair, follows a hunch, or maybe it's a direction from something beyond. He and Marilyn Seaford search in McAllister Creek Canyon. Deep in the canyon, he hears moaning. At first, he thinks it's a bear. The next thing I knew, I was shouting uh, Michelle's name. It just came out of me. And about as fast as I was surprised that that took place, Michelle answers me over here. I couldn't believe my ears. I just started going through that creek bottom, through the thick brush, hollering back, you know, where you at? I'm coming for you. And finally, I could see her. I got a visual, and finally, I made my way to her. And uh, she was just as calm and peaceful as can be. I had crawled down to the creek to uh, get breakfast, as I called it. My water and uh, my uh, rose hips along the way. And I heard somebody say, Michelle! And it was so strange not hearing anybody. I said, yeah, what do you want? And it was dead silent. Is that you, Michelle? Michelle, is that said, you? Yes. Yeah. Where, Where are, are you? you? I'm having breakfast. <laughs> Sunday morning, we put everybody in that canyon. Michelle. About 9.30 in the morning. He found her. <sighs> Bill called me on the radio and he said, Benny, she's alive. Benny, it's Bill. I found her and she's in the bottom of the canyon. Benny fights his way down into the canyon to find his daughter, miraculously alive. When my father came in to the draw, 
the first thing I said to him is, what took you so long? I'm right beside the fence, and I'm sorry I crossed the road. And he said, do I have to get an elk out of here? Drag an elk out of here? And I said, no, you don't have to get an elk. And he was asking me, he says, do you think you can get up and walk? Or can you get up and walk? And I said, no, can't do that. Feet are froze solid. Airlifted to safety, Michelle's ordeal is far from over. At the hospital, the pain of thawing her frostbitten flesh is excruciating. And the final verdict is heart-wrenching. Both her lower legs must be amputated. They saved both of my knees and four inches below the knees on both legs. I'm very blessed. I can walk. The loss of her limbs has really not changed Michelle in spirit or any way that she was. She still wants to hunt. She still wants to fish. I think I have adjusted very well. I'm trying to do everything that I did before. Still go fishing. Still go hunting. Michelle Heilman's agonizing ordeal has led to insight for her and for her father. I think after this incident happened with Michelle, it has made me realize just how precious each day is. Tomorrow is not for certain. You don't take life for granted. Enjoy today. Enjoy everything that is around you today. You don't know what's going to come tomorrow.